Well, good evening. I'm your host, Noel Club, here on Club Tracks TV show, and welcome to Spanish Sports World Network on Zingo TV channel 250. Please remember to download Zingo TV app from respective iOS and Android app stores, as the app is absolutely free. And while you download, please make sure to rate and leave a comment because we want to hear from you, you, and especially from you over there hiding. We see you. We see you. And of course, Zingo TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire, and Fire TV Sticks. Roku Roku Sticks are also available on all smart TVs from 2016 forward. So welcome to Club Tracks TV show. I'm your host, Noel Club, and let's introduce our cool co-host. He's a solo artist and is also the lead singer and guitarist of New York City's classic rock band, The Handful. Please welcome the one and the only, Mr. Mark. Cool dude. dude. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not worthy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Oh, you're worthy. Give me a break. How you doing today, brother? <laughs> I'm okay, man. It's been a tough week, but uh, anyway, it's good to see you here on the show, man. Nice to see you recording your uh, your new stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun to get back in there after a little while. And, um, you know, w within five minutes, it felt like, you know, no time went by at all. So we were back yeah. on the board pretty good. Yeah, but, like right uh, now, yeah. Like riding a bike, it's, you know, it's, it never uh, never goes away, right? That's so right, man. And uh, lucky enough that uh, my wife let me come out and play oh. on her night tonight. <laughs> so uh, yeah. happy Mother's Day, ladies. Yeah. Thank you. And to all the all the moms out there and, and mother figures and, and stepmoms like my sister, um, all you guys, you know. Yeah, exactly. And my wife yeah. was openly doubting how. She says, how are you and Noel – going to interview women in song. Um, I said, I don't know. We'll give it our best shot, you know? We sure will. We sure will. Yeah, so we'll see what happens here. Exactly. Well, hey, thanks again for coming on the show on this Mother's Day's edition. Thanks for coming on. We much appreciate it. Taking time away from your families and joining us here on the show. We much appreciate it. So thank you. But yeah, I just want to send a quick little condolence uh, message. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my uncle this past week. Um, Mr. Dennis Trubick, he passed on Tuesday. He had a long battle against uh, cancer. And uh, so sad we lost him. And so I just want to send my condolences to uh, Trubick family, the club family, Nicholas family, and the Porter family for our deep and dear loss this past week. So Dennis, wherever you are, we, we think, we're thinking of you. We miss you and we love you. So um, yeah, God bless and uh, rest in peace, my friend. Nice. And moving on to the show, which, of course, Sunday, 7 o'clock, it's, it's Club Tracks. They hang out with Mark and our guests here tonight. So let's start off with our cool guests here this evening. So they are a dynamic trio singing and songwriting artists, and they've been around for 20 years now. It was released as of uh, this past January, their debut album, which is called Life of a Woman. Please welcome Patty Dunlop. Lois O'Hanley Jones and Debbie, I believe I'm pronouncing correctly, Rivard of Women's Song. Welcome to the show, folks. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. And how are you this evening? We're great. We're great. We, we're very thankful for this opportunity, and we're hoping that lots of people have signed in tonight. And uh, we're excited to answer your questions and to play you a song. Excellent. So, yeah, same with us. We hear your song of yours for sure. So we're asking, of course, first things first. So you're all you're all from originally from uh, Blind River, Ontario. Is that correct? I'm the only one originally born and raised from in Blind ah, River. Mm -hmm. I see. I was uh, born in Sudbury and raised in Elliott Lake, but I've lived here in Blind River for the last 38 years. Very I was good. From Ottawa Valley, and then I moved here in my 20s. Oh, I see. I see. You used to. But you're all you're all blind over now. Very good, very good. So, uh, who are your earliest musical influences for the three of you uh, growing up? Oh my goodness. Well, for me, it was definitely James Taylor, Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. Ronstadt. These were my uh, seventy go-tos. Right on. My first crush <laughs> popping up again, Linda Ronstadt. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Came up last week. <laughs> right. I grew up listening to my parents' music. I grew up listening to Elvis, to big band music. I even listened to Engelbert Humperdinck with my parents. But as I got older, all of a sudden, Linda Ronstadt, Carly Simon, John Denver, just too many to name. Yeah, yeah. 
That's a great list that you gave there. Great list. Mine was mostly all country music. So it would have been Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynott, Willie Nelson. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent call there. So how did the three of you uh, form? <laughs> we formed because Lois doesn't know how to bake. How to bake her. There was a fundraiser going on when Lois's two kids were in elementary school. And they wow. asked Lois if she could bake some cookies for the fundraiser. I'll let you continue, my dear. Well, I said I can't bake, but I can sing. So I, I didn't want to do the get along. So I knew these two as acquaintances. And uh, we teamed up that night. And uh, once we heard our sound, we got hooked. And we decided to push forward and remain as a group. And we have done so for over 20 years now and loved every minute of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Twenty years together. It's pretty amazing. Probably over twenty years. Yeah, and not over one twenty fight, years now. Not one fight or disagreement. That's exceptional. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, hey, over to Mark. Over to Mark for a question or so. Okay. Yeah. So, um, listening to you guys, I mean, you really, um, you really seem to stay out of each other's way musically and the harmonies are great. So yeah, yeah. Um, how long did that kind of take? How long were you guys playing together for before everyone kind of knew what their role was, knew which harmony they were going to sing? How did that come to you? Was it easy? Was it uh, after a while? It was instantaneous. It was. Because yeah. I'm, a, I'm an alto singer and a harmony okay. singer. Patty's a soprano singer and Deb does melody. So yeah. it just came together like a beautiful marriage. It really did. Yeah. And do really you guys did. have any formal training, any of you, or um, or what? You know, how did you how did you individually get involved in music? Well, nobody in my family is particularly musical, but we always grew up. I grew up. There was always music in the house. From a young age, I was in school choirs. Uh, I was once I was in high school, I performed in variety nights in at school assemblies, different concerts, no formal training per se, but I always loved music and I always loved singing and I always loved harmonizing. Excellent. And I've, I've had some formal training in guitar lessons. I took a few guitar lessons for a couple of years and okay. I taught, I'm a retired school teacher. So I taught guitar and I taught local music uh, in, in the classroom at the high school here in Blind River. And uh, like Patty, I just started to sing, and it just went from there. My mother is from Acadia. She's from Chip, Canada, Nova Scotia, so I've got that East Coast influence. Uh, my father couldn't care what in the bucket, but all my siblings play. And uh, so, again, with Patty, it's not really any formal training. Okay. Interesting. And you? I've had no formal training. I just, at the kitchen table with uh, a lot of at the kitchen table with a lot of relatives. Which so is, is this the first group uh, group you've been in, or, or were you in rock bands or folk bands or anything uh, uh, previously? I, I've I've been in a rock band. I was in a rock band for twenty years. Cool. I you know yeah. one. You know, I want to mention that that was kind of under underlined by a couple of things uh, you guys said is the importance of uh, of music education. You know, whether or not. Um, uh, you know, uh, you're, if you're not introduced to music in the schools, a lot of times it doesn't happen, right? If you don't have somebody musical at home. And what I see in, in our school district is, um, and my wife is an educator, is the arts programs tend to be the first programs to get cut. For some reason, um, administrators think they're less important than sports, right? And it's less important than, than home ec, or it's less important than math. And um, I always say, you know, if it wasn't for that, my, my folks are not musicians. And I met everyone that I played with and learned from and, and uh, in the public school system. So um, if it wasn't for that, I don't know what I would do. And I think there's a lot of people that are like that as well. So um, I, think, I think that's great. Um, I think it's particularly great that uh, you dedicated um, your life to being an educator and to, uh, mm -hmm. to pass on the joy of music to people. The guitar is not an easy instrument to learn, is it? No, but I, I definitely had a teacher who impacted my life, and uh, that's why I'm on this path now. So, you know, you're absolutely correct about education and the arts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you find that in your area as well. It's not unique to the East Coast of the United States. It's, all, it's like as soon as there's a budget issue, it's like can we get rid of choir or school band or which one of these – 
and and it's too often it's it's uh it's music i know i know mm -hmm. Noel agrees with me on that as well yeah that's very true that's very true everywhere you're right yeah yeah and um, you know you guys obviously you you wrote a bunch of songs for this record so um when you first started out it was traditional songs it was cover songs how did you choose the songs and then how did you guys start to come together to write your own stuff we started off doing cover tunes yeah we did yes and yeah. then and then i said no you know what we've got to make some stuff our own yeah and then we just decided to meet and we have writing sessions where we write about our lives and experiences and it just came came out yes. and then when it came to choose the songs for the album we want to make sure there was a lot of variety and i think we succeeded in that. i think so too Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, you certainly did. As I was prepping for the show, I, I don't have a particularly large house. And so when I listen and I prep for the show, my whole family listens. And my wife was kind of cheering along with the record, uh, saying, yeah, that's right. You know, the, the, the kind of guys, she's a mother of two. Um, I'm a dad. And, and you know, it, 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 the responsibilities are different. Um, but she really felt a lot of... Uh, had a lot of kinship with you guys and what you were saying, especially on the first track. Then there was also a track about, um, you know, whether or not you're enough. Um, and that's a feeling that she's yeah. had a lot. Um, yeah. And I was touched about the track about uh, the boy leaving home because I have a 14 year old son and um, everything that he does more, I'm equally proud of him and heartbroken that he doesn't need me anymore. And I'm his dad, and I know that 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 um, women typically have a tighter bond um, even with their children. So, are these songs about your lives, or are they stories? No, are they fiction? That song, "Growing Up and Letting Go," was actually written about my son when he, my my elder son, I had two boys. Um, he was leaving to go away to university and to start his first job and, you know, we were always in Blind River and he went, he's now in Nova Scotia, but he went to BC and I'm like, he's going halfway across the world. Yeah. With, uh, spoke to the girls and we came up with this song and it's very heartfelt and I think a lot of people can relate to it. First of all, Mark, I'm super impressed mm -hmm. that you listened to the lyrics. Yes. I'm like, wow. That's <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I appreciate what you guys do. I'm a songwriter myself. I know how we all agonize over every little bit of it. And so um, mm -hmm. it deserves, it certainly deserved that attention. It's very well done. And I think when other people can see their story in your songs, right, that's what makes a song a good song and yeah. not just a forgettable piece of fiction so that's why i asked the question um I, how about you other guys have any any uh what songs are the most personal to you in terms of your experience Each well you. uh, the song we're going to do tonight i'll let tell, tell you a little bit about the, the the first uh release from our album is called but i knew her when and that song originally was written about my mom my mom had Alzheimer's disease and mm, she uh. passed away in 2008. But before she passed away, we got together and it was, it was really tough. It's a really tough disease, but we, we wrote this song in memory of my, in honor of my mother, I guess. And in the years uh, that have passed, uh, for the first two or three years, one of us couldn't sing the song on yeah, stage without well, crying. And yeah. then the audience is crying. <laughs> <laughs> Now my mom is in the last stages of the disease and I'm her primary caregiver. The song means more to us now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a song that for you tonight when, we, when you're ready. Um, another song personal on the album is a song called The Last Time I Saw Sarah. And Sarah is my daughter. And we'd had an argument in the day, teenagers, right? <laughs> and I went to bed, the argument had not been resolved and I had this dream and then the dream translated to the song. So that's one of the personal ones for me. Mm -hmm. And another yeah. one on the album is called Rye and Sunny D. <laughs> and that song is about my daughter, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught underage drinking. And then she wow. was home the next day. And where some parents might ground or spank, I wrote a song. <laughs> so <laughs> that's personal to me on the album. I was and wondering who was mixing Rye with Sunny D and how they were <laughs> the next day. I don't know. Now that's you know. know what's going on there. <laughs> There's even some people willing to try it now. Yes, it sounds yeah, really good. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the right mood, I suppose it sounds like something you might want to try. 
<laughs> really adventurous at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it yeah, sounds like the kind of stuff we would steal from our parents' liquor yeah, cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try this and a little bit of that. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? What's what's particularly special for you? Uh, I, I wrote um, a woman so blue, and it came to me. I got to play with a bluegrass band from um, down in the states, and the next night I was still really worked up. And about three thirty in the morning, this song came to me. I had no guitar, I'm at camp, I'm in the bathroom on the back of a grocery list, writing down the lyrics because they were just Excellent. broken out. And then I thought, how am I gonna remember the tune? So I sat there with my air guitar and figured out the <laughs> That works. <laughs> That's great. I love those stories. How we're all singing into our phones or leaving stuff yeah. on somebody's answering machine yeah. or scribbling it on a grocery. That's uh, that's absolutely something uh, a, a songwriter gets. That that happens to all of us. So uh, those and, were and terrific you, answers. Uh, you don't write it down. It doesn't happen. <laughs> that's right. At one time in my life, I thought to myself, "Listen, if I don't remember it, it's not good enough." And then I realized I don't remember most of anything, and it means not. So, um, yeah. yeah, aging sucks that way. Yeah, doesn't it? Does it speak for yourself? But yeah. Uh, so uh, back to back to no, back to you. I don't want to hog the interview. Oh, it's all good. It's always all good, man. Don't worry there. So when I look through your music, I, I hear a lot of the country. You know, I hear the pop and I hear the folk. Uh, of course, being all intertwined together. So I was going to ask you. Um, in terms of like your music, uh, how would you describe your music to a new listener? If someone actually asked you that question, how would you describe your music? Well, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Um, it is a fusion of folk, country, and pop. Uh, Patty is the pop specialist, Debbie is the country specialist, and I'm the folk specialist. And so oh, when we're choosing songs for the show, we think about these three uh, backgrounds, and then they, we pull them together, and it seems to work. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Very good. Very good. So you have a song for us, you were saying earlier? You got a song for us? Yes, we do. We do. My wonderful husband set up this whole arrangement tonight for us, so I'm grateful to him. So the song we're going to do for you is a uh, single off the album, and it's called But I Knew Her Way. Excellent. All right. Terrific. So let's hear it. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
track i see my sister is crying yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm reading the comments That's right now you know it's good yeah <laughs> very touching and very there's touching. Sarah. sarah jones who all the songs are about yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah the comments keep coming in with the tears coming down very good very good <laughs> Well, actually, it's got a great segue for me because I was actually going to ask that same question about the same song because you had that wonderful line in there about uh, once when she was invincible, now she's invisible. Is that song about somebody specifically? It was originally about my mom. That song was about my mom. She had Alzheimer's disease, and my mother was the assistant clerk for the town of Blind River. She was up oh. there. She was doing stuff. Alzheimer's hits, and that person... They change, but for Absolutely. me, for me, the hardest thing about the disease is you lose the person long before they pass away. Yeah. So yeah. true, very they true. Dynamic to not. Yeah. And now my mother is in the last stages of the disease, and I'm her primary caregiver. She lives with us, so uh, yeah, the song resonates even more now. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think yeah. it's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of. Families are touched somehow or another by Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. And I think, you know, it, it, it hurts a lot at first and, and it doesn't stop hurting, but I mean, you have to kind of learn that that's not that person anymore. You know, that that person you knew is they're not in there anymore. And, that's and, right. you know, you can't, you know, you can't be so hurt by everything they say and do, but, I know that's a tough situation, so um, I think that's a really good song. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. well done. Yeah, because I lost my grandfather to Alzheimer's uh, many years ago, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I totally uh, I know where you're coming from with this topic, absolutely. But fantastic yeah. song. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank that you. That was really well done. Thank you. Over to Mark. So you guys have been together a long time, and then you put out the album pretty recently, right, in like 2020? Yeah. So what, um, in, in all the years before that, it was it just live performances? Was it friends and family? We, did you guys start going out to play? Did you do festivals? And how did you come around to wanting to cut an album? We played everywhere and anywhere along the North Shore and Northern Ontario. But the pandemic is the thing that slowed mm -hmm. us down because we had families. We were raising families. We were working. We are all now retired. We had the time to put into it. Our fans kept asking us, do you have a CD? Do you have an album? It was always no, but <laughs> at the shows every year, very often at our shows, people would say, when are you going to cut a CD? When are you going to do an album? Lois is the jokester of the group, and Lois would say, we're going to do it in 2020. We're going to do it in 2020. <laughs> here we are. 2020, 
2021 pandemic and we have our first album. And yeah. one of the major reasons too that album has happened is because the owner of Riverview Studios in Blind River, who used to be my student, then we worked in a duo together, and now he has his own recording studio, but he approached us. He said, listen, it's time. And we said, you're right, you're right. It's time, you're right. <laughs> That's great. That's great, because fans do always want to kind of take a piece of your home and have something to own and and uh, and remember the performances by. When you went into Cuts the Record, was it like um, – just like your live performances. Like I noticed you hit your harmonies very well there. It was live. I heard it when you recorded it. Most of the bands I'm in, you know, we'll cut the harmonies. We'll just track them one at a time to make sure they're perfect. And then when it's live, eh, it's close enough for rock and roll. But you guys are really on. So did you hit, did you sing at the same time in the studio? Did you track it? How'd you manage the process? Well, we laid down the tracks. In in a at the LST music hall, a music hall here in Blind River, we laid down all the tracks, and then in September we went in and did the individual touch-ups. Uh, so we were separate, and then in November we went back for the um, the callback to make sure everything was perfect. So he had to do a few adjustments at times on the uh, pitch, but uh, that's what we we mainly recorded. Without, without us being, yeah, that's right. We all do our individual recording. Yeah, that's 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 one of those things where um, you know technology has enabled that, and you have um, you have folks that are able to do that. I'm amazed that it sounds just because you're the universe of your experience. It sounds like is mostly spent with each other musically, and you're close by. But um, I, I guess you had enough experience doing those songs that it was able to translate in the studio, even though you weren't together. That's pretty cool. Um, and it was the pandemic, I suppose, that necessitated that. Yeah, exactly. And when we're performing live, uh, there's no forgiveness. Those people are sitting right in front right. of you. You hit those harmony notes. Yeah. And whenever Patty makes a mistake, I tell her. <laughs> 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 Thanks for that. Just <laughs> yeah, because the audience doesn't know who the one that hit the bad note is. They're just looking at you. So. <laughs> Tell the one making the mistake has a big grin on her face and looks at the other. That's great. So, so that's great. And then uh, you played guitar on the album as well? Yes, we had a guitar. Um, we had uh, Debbie playing mandolin. We had a bass player, a drummer, and um, "But I Knew Her When" is the only single on the album that actually has a violin. We had somebody come in and do a violin piece on that. Yeah, but, we had heart and, too, heart, harmonica. Oh my God, Patty's husband played harmonica. Yeah. Of course, he was great. And <laughs> yes, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> he was great. He was great. And um, and so that's it. It's a very kind of a, it's not a big elaborate orchestral uh grand kind of an album it's kind of very roots yeah it's yeah. appropriate for the yeah. music it's that you know you're not going to produce it you know like queen or something so i get it um and uh no it sounds great um it has a great vibe to it so i was just curious about that now how did you how did you get the folks together to, to collaborate with you on these records did you know these musicians did a producer bring them together how did that happen they're all they're, friends. They're our lifelong friends here yes. in Blind River. And before oh. I put this along, I, I was with these, this group of musicians, the Jacques Brothers in Blind River. They're a family musical tradition in our town. Mm -hmm. And I played with them for 20 years and then uh, also with Women in Song. So these everybody on the album played for free, and they are our friends. Yes. And we forgot to mention the banjo player, Murray Richard, 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 also. Yes. He played banjo in a few of the songs, too. So these are all the people that at one time or another we've jammed with, we've played with, we've performed with. Yeah, so they're all our friends. Actually, you slept with one of them. Next question's you, Noel, I'm out. <laughs> it's really oh, oh, boy. It's Talk a bother on that, Sarah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. No, we did not. That's close. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen on the big show, brother. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You've got to be ready for anything and everything on this show. So, yeah, there you go. 
Oh. Nice, nice little drop there. Huh? <laughs> <I love> <laughs> Mom, have you been drinking some Ryan Sunny D? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she gets to go. I'll confess to a little amaretto. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh okay. no. <laughs> we love it. We love it. It's all good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll get back to the show again. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the fact you have uh, the memories of Truro, where you had the line, Nova Scotia, can you hear my call? Okay, actually, I'm sorry, can you hear my name? Nova Scotia will never be the same. What's the story behind that song? Once again, my elder son went from BC to Nova Scotia. He's been living in Nova Scotia now for six, seven years, married, uh, children, baby number three on the way, blah, blah, blah. But the first time I went to visit them was my first time going to Nova Scotia. And they were living in Truro at the time. So I oh. came back and I was so pumped about Nova Scotia and Truro and my trip and how beautiful it was. And the next thing you know, lovely Lois here wrote a song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, She's I, I was East Coast, route, East Coast roots as well. Yeah, right? I was very inspired by Patty's description of Truro, so I wrote the song, <laughs> and uh, it turned out really well. And we contacted the mayor of uh, Truro, and oh, they yeah. one of the council meeting. They put us on the front page of the Truro newspaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I had a uh, high school friend who was driving to Nova Scotia and heard the song on the radio to let me so know that. Again. And then I said, "Oh my gosh, you know." So that's the story behind Memories of Truro. Yeah. Oh, I see. Very good. Very good. Uh -huh. Actually, I'm going to ask you guys, too. Do you have anything uh, planned for doing any kind of like online performances the next little while? Doing any kind of online events? Well, we just did one Friday for the Archives Association of Ontario's conference next week in the Sioux. And on Monday yeah. night, we're going to be featured on the uh, Cybercy TV News. Um, mm. But we did one for Natalie. Uh, we did one, yeah. We did a Zoom concert for Natalie about a month ago. For a senior. Oh, I see, yeah. In the yeah. But I, I don't think we have anything. We don't have anything planned at the moment. No, it's been quiet because of COVID. Yeah. And now this is time to write, right? Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Write and record right now is like is the best time right now. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, over to Mark again. Back over to Mark. So as I'm listening to the album, there was another song I wanted to ask about, and I think it's. Um, is it where the, the prairie is an ocean or uh, something like that? I was born in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, and so I'm nostalgic. The word jumped off the page to me. But I, I, I like songs. Um, I love relationship songs. I, I also love songs about places, um, especially, you know, uh, when a title can sort of conjure something in my mind. So um, what's that What's that song about? Well, uh, I worked high school with a, a man named Wolf Kirkmeyer. He was the English head at the school. And once we were all retired, he uh, got in touch with me and he said, I have some some poetry. Uh, can I give it to you? And I can see if you could maybe put it to music. And the mm. very ocean was one of those songs. And uh, so I took the lyrics, I massaged them a bit and I put a melody to it. We put the harmonies to it and there was born uh, the prairies and ocean. And it's interesting you should mention that song because that's the one we're definitely going to um, uh, submit for a Juno nomination. Oh, oh that excellent, is. excellent. Ah, and how did you decide on that? Was something you kind of all agreed on or we, was there a lot of horse trading and kind of hashing it out? <laughs> there was, I'll tell you, sometimes there's a note between the three of us that I'm not happy with the songs I have, and we'll work on that until we, we kill somebody. On one note. But the writing and the melody and the chord note, there's no, there's no problems with that at all. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> kind of you know, one of the things that's good about the song is it's kind of cinematic in its imagery and what it conjures. You probably do you guys make videos at all? Well, no, no, sure not yet. yet. We have not, but you know that kid I have named Sarah? Well, she's a videographer and a photographer, so she's going to be helping us create our first video for But When I Knew I knew Her Lane. But we can't do it until the lockdown. And we were all set to start doing it a few weeks ago, and then the stay-at-home order happened, and so we had to put that aside until right. you know, the stay-at-home order look, look who's staying at home. Yeah. That's great. Well, it's good. You can double down on that commitment she made on Mother's Day. And what's she going to say, really? There you go. There you go. 
yeah. But yeah, we're going <laughs> with, with that video. We are. Yeah. Now, well, now that you made one album, um, were there songs that got left off the album that you had, by the way? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yes, yes. We're ready. We've got eight in the can, ready to go for the next album. If we That's what I was going to ask because it's, it's sometimes yeah. it's agonizing choosing just the order of the songs. Never mind if you have to leave some behind, and you say, "Well, they're for the next album," and I hope there is a next album because I really like that one type of thing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, we awesome. We hope there is too. We I just so one nice. seventy nine when we made yeah. it. Yeah, we waited this long to do this one, so we can't wait that long to do the next one. <laughs> it went over well in my house. Where uh, my wife and I actually had, uh, you know, uh, are big fans of the Indigo Girls. We had a chance to see John Denver a couple times before he passed, and um, a lot of people don't know this because I, you know, my instrument is more tuned to hard rock. So, but um, I I love James Taylor and uh, Jim Croce and uh, and and a lot of acoustic music. Um, it really speaks to me. It's just not suited to my instrument vocally. But um, yeah, I think I heard a, a lot of that stuff and, and even the older stuff that, that you mentioned. Um, to me, you know, when I went to college, um, I guess it was in the early 90s, you know, the Indigo Girls were really popular. And I went yeah. to NYU and there was quite a bit of a, and there still is, you know, a cafe type of vibe there where you could go out and hear acoustic music and lots of people were covering it. So um, that was something that came to mind. And when you get a little more aggressive, I can even hear like Melissa Etheridge, but that's that's sort of more my background. That's what I know. But there's lots of uh, stuff in there. You guys aren't just folk or country, you have some rock in there, some pop. So um, that's interesting. You know, you, you defy easy categorization in that respect. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're all in our 60s, and this is a thing that we feel proud about um, crossing off our bucket list, right? I, got, I definitely want to uh, meet Keith Richards at the finishing line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep going. <laughs> I'm not going to outlive Keith, no chance. <laughs> yeah, Keith is something very special, unique in this world. Uh, okay, my, my wife is telling me in, my, in the background that her favorite line was about the woman in the house of the household having to get up early and then going to bed last, which was sort of a jab at me because it does happen every night um, <laughs> and every single morning. Um, <laughs> Even today, and it was Mother's Day. So, honey, I, I let you know. I let that in there. <laughs> oh, well. What can I say? <laughs> I lost track of where I was. You got, uh, no, how about you ask one more? Yeah, man. Over here. It's all good. It's all good. Let me ask you, uh, let's go ask you ladies, you have plans for to release another single off this new record, off this current, latest record? We yes, we do. Yes, and we're prepared to play that one tonight too. <laughs> sure, yeah. bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah, okay. roll. Yeah. Um. Well, we haven't really made our final decision on this. Uh, we want to. <laughs> we want to thank Eric Alper, of course, for yeah. setting this up for us. Um, hiring El Eric Alper was the best yeah. thing we could have yes, done. Uh, he's moving mountains for us, so thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, he's the best. He's the best. Of course, we want his opinion on which one should be the next release because we really respect his opinion. But uh, Pat and I, we maybe still thinking about it, but uh, we think the next single should be in uh, the last time I saw Sarah. Oh, okay. okay. Good. Would you like to hear it? it Absolutely. That'd be wonderful. Absolutely right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. 
Great song. Thanks a lot. Yeah, well, thank, great. You. thank you. That's it's great. Only water. It's only water. <laughs> so what do you guys wrote that song? Was that um was that take a long time to write that song? Was it kind of a quick uh, write for you with a single? No, like I say we had an argument of the day. I had a dream yeah. at night, it, the words came to me and I just wrote it the next day. And there it was unfolded. Well, there it was. Yeah. It's so relatable, though, because I mean, I think so many of us had had uh, words with a loved one and wish we hadn't, and then sort of think, "Well, I hope I I see him again soon, and I can sort it out." So, um, yeah, I get it, you know. Um, and again, that's what makes a really good song that it's relatable. Yeah, you know, I don't know yeah. you, and I don't know Sarah, but but I know what you mean. So, yeah. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, back over to Mark for one more question if we're out of time. Yeah. Um, now, uh, in in your, I guess, scene is there is there a, is there a much of, is there a folk scene up there? Um, well, not a folk scene per se, but we call Blind River the Nashville of the North. We have so many musicians. In fact, yeah. Debbie, Patty, and I have been inducted into the. Northern Ontario Country Music, Country Music, Music Association, yeah. Great Northern Opry. Northern Opry. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, really, That's yeah. great. So what I was getting at is it is it do you find it a supportive scene for your music? Mark, I played more music in Blind River. Before I came here, I was a professional music musician in Toronto for about three years. But I played more music here in Blind River, yes. more fully, more deeply, and more often than I ever have anywhere else. It's been- Is fun. that what brought you there or is it just that uh, you just happen no, to be lucky? The teaching job brought me here. The but, actual money. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, the, <laughs> hopefully the community sees the value in that like we talked about before. That's wonderful. Um, so that worked out for you and it worked out for the uh, for the people of, uh, of the community that, that they had you there to teach them and their children. So that's wonderful. Yeah. And we have so many fans that are supporting yeah. us, and it's just so wonderful. We see people on the street that congratulate us, that say, oh, you're putting Blind River on the map, and thank you for letting us follow along on your journey, and it's just a really nice feeling. That's we rewarding. Everything. That is, yeah. We post special. everything mm -hmm. so that people know what we're doing. Yeah. So it's really nice. What's well, another good thing about the intersection of technology and music, even if, you know, um, but, uh, you know, that's how I, how I met Noel through music, you know, and I'm, you know, 1200 miles away, 
Yeah. And, um, you know, he knew who I was. And so uh, sometimes, you know, it's super rewarding, even if you don't make a lot of money, which I can say for sure. My most, <laughs> my most rewarding moments have nothing to do with anything I've been paid, for sure. Yeah, That's, me too. So. You too. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm so glad you guys um let us let us talk to you tonight, especially on Mother's Day. It was an honor, and it's really a terrific record. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Louise. Thank, thank you so much, and thank you for this opportunity to reach out to uh, more people. And uh, and now we know you. Boom. So, yeah. Yes. Totally now. Exactly. And you're ever up this way, Blind River. You've got a place to stay. Excellent. Oh, very good. Very good. Uh, at Debbie's house. Yeah. going to be another story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe another song. Yeah, yeah that's it. Funny. Another song. There's a song in there somewhere for sure. <laughs> There's a couple of songs in there, I think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Mark, can we tell you where people can find our music? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah, please tell us where you can find it online. Absolutely. Well, our music is available, of course, on Spotify, on iTunes, on Amazon Music, on YouTube. We also have a Facebook page. People can search for us, uh, Women in Song. We have an Instagram page. They have to search for Women in Song. And we have a website, and it's womeninsong.com. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Anyway, you have a yeah. message you want to leave with, uh, leave with your fans here on the show before we go? I'm sorry. Oh, you, you want to leave a message for, for your fans here before you, leave, before you leave the show? Oh, yeah. Um, we want to thank everyone for their support. Sure. We want to. <laughs> There's a CD. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, we encourage you to purchase a CD, and we love when you leave us comments so that we can get back to you. We enjoy the feedback. We want to tell our fans. One thing that's truly surprised us is in today's era of technology and Spotify and Amazon Music and iTunes and all that stuff, we have sold over 600 CDs, and we think that that's for the for the small town well women. That's well a big deal because. People, I guess, still have CD players. <laughs> yes, they do. And, and we oh, tell yeah. the we tell the, the viewers also that if you really want to support the artist and their music, go out and buy a CD, go out yeah. and buy an album. The downloads are nice, but the artist doesn't really get rewarded for that. So if you exactly. like to hear, and go out and if, spend a couple of bucks, you know. And if yeah. people are interested in buying the CD, they can reach us through our website. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And very that's good. Good. Thanks for that. Super, yeah, right on. Hey, thanks, yeah, thanks I want to mention that my, my daughter Sarah did the photo cover for our album. Oh, yes. And yeah. she just thanked us for modeling the product. <laughs> <laughs> That's well done. Excellent Same job. All around. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Same with self promotion, right on. Well, hey, thanks, gang, for coming on the show. So I want to thank uh, Patty and, of course, Lois and Debbie for coming on the show. And, of course, Mark, my cool co host, as always. So thank you guys. Thanks for coming on the show. And of course, enjoy your Mother's Day, what's left of it. And thanks again for taking time out of your Mother's Day to come on the show and joining us here. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Bye. See you Thank later. you. Thank you. So please right. check out Star Sports World Network for all the news. Watch it, hear it, read it, download it, live it. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. All the best. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>